All right, whenever you get to a new town, the first thing you're going to want to do all the time is check into the hotel. And you'll see this big moon sign above, and you'll see the character inside with a moon above his head. Make sure you always look for blue pieces of paper that are on fire in these buildings, because there's usually two or three. It's free, easy XP. There's three right there. just showed you, and that will give you 120 or so per page and 360 for all three. Now, it will go up in rank and XP size the higher levels you get to. And what you're going to come here and do is turn in missions, follow this, pick up this, go to the town board. Nope, I see a blue sheet. Let's grab that. And then you're going to go ahead and go back out to the world and continue ranking up. A lot of the early game is basically doing missions like any other MMO. Right here is the war board and that will show you if you can sign up for war or whatnot and see if you get accepted that's later in game so we don't need to cover that now these are all the town board missions they give you xp you just got 230 xp 237 xp for turning that in and while we're out in the world we can pick up other things that you just saw there turn them in and some of those you want to craft at different stations now the ones you craft at the forge station will give you a lot more xp so I would definitely say do that and then go on about your way. And every time you come in town, check those town missions and turn them in. You can buy a lot of the stuff from the marketplace and turn them in. So this is the basically if you own the territory, you can provide lifestyle improvements for everybody. Town bus for crafting. So this is very, very in game. And what you see here is your ability to upgrade the Citadel, your gates, of what you're going to be defending when you go to war your repeaters your all the sorts of defenses systems you have you can upgrade here's all the workshops in the town that you can upgrade to tier five that you want to upgrade to keep people happy and living here so that's that here's the governor's desk and this is where you would go ahead and make your payrolls and dish out any funds that you get from owning the town but this will show you the property management, the trading fees, the crafting fees, the refining fees, the money, uh, money you're earning coming in. And you can select which day to see what stat line you have. All right. Owning these areas is very profitable and owning other towns. Not every town is equal. Some other towns like Bremstone or Windsward, you will get a lot more money than, let's say, Monarchs. A lot of more people in game own towns. Windsward, Evanskell, and Brimstone seem to be very popular. Brightwood, another one that seems to be popular. You got your storage here that you could throw a lot of your gear in because if you see, I'm 115 out of 200 weight. I don't want to get out there and get encumbered and get too heavy and have stuff on me that I don't need to have on me. A lot of this gear, I'm going to end up getting better gear. I'm not worried about dying because the enemies aren't going to hit that hard early on and there's going to be a lot of people around ranking up so really i could just delete all the gear right here by selecting that and let's go ahead and throw all this stuff into storage lighten my load there's a reward i can open and i should maybe get some gold or some items hey 50 gold let's go i'm rich just put all this stuff lighten the load and then let's get back down out there and rank up don't spend too much time in town wasting away okay all these weapons i don't really care about deleting them i'm just gonna be sticking with the great sword and spear and then i'm gonna pick up a bow later on once i actually get a decent one and that's what we're gonna do so let me go ahead and turn this in and let's get on about our business this is a fast travel shrine, so when you fast travel to the town, this is where you'll end up. You can also select the fast travel out, so to another town or to a fast travel point. So that's what that looks like. You'll see those out there in the world. So make sure anytime you see one of those that are close by where you are, you go ahead and get them because you never know when you're going to need to go back to that area and you don't want to have to run because you don't have them out yet all the way back over there, okay? Make sure you pick those up. Even if it's a little out of your way, go ahead and go to them, stand on them so you unlock them and you can use them later. All right, what we're looking at right here are the territory bonuses that you're going to get by leveling up in that area. So let's say I just unlocked the home ownership and now I got standing gain, XP gain, and gather. What am I going to choose? Well, I always like standing gain. Do not pick XP gain ever. You can never change these once you pick one. If you plan on owning a home later on in this area, or you may not know you will, then 
you want to always either pick standing gain or maybe even gather. Gather's good in, let's say, Monarchs. I wouldn't do it in Windsward if the main story quest puts you there because Windsward's so good at owning a home. I would only pick trading fee and crafting fee there, maybe home ownership bonuses so you can pay less taxes on all three of those things. Don't pick XP gain because once you get to max level and you're going to rank up fast enough anyways, you'll never use it again. It's wasted and you can never reclaim those. All right, so we're going to go over some of the stations real briefly. This is the Arca Arcane Repository. And you're going to be able to craft a lot of the mage weapons here. Fire Staff, Ice Gauntlet, VGs, or Void Gauntlets, your potions for health or mana, your uh, coatings for your weapons against different enemy types, ancients, humans, uh, angry earth, corrupted, ward pots that will help you absorb more damage from those same ones. And over here, you're gonna have tannery. This is gonna be when you basically skin animals out there, you bring them back, you got the raw hide, you can make it into coarse leather. You wanna rank this up so you can make some of the more elite rare items later on in game. Make sure you take advantage of that first craft bonus on everything you do. I'm going to say it over and over and over so you make sure you have it in your head. All right, next we're going to the loom. Everybody pinkies up the loom. Where the fibers that you find in the world from the hemp, you can make into linen. And once you rank this up, you can make more rare items of that sort. Then you come over here to the outfitting stations where you're going to take linen, rawhide, and ingots from anything you smelted. And you can make clothing or... You know jewelry there's earrings rings and all that you can make you can also make coarse leather bags this is going to be jewel crafting and armoring and you're going to need a minor rune of holding to make the bags as that means you have to be part of a faction i will go into that into the next video this is transmog so as you pick up weapons in the game it automatically saves them so you can go back later and select whatever skin of whatever item you came across in the game and you can go ahead and spec your character out to look however you want Home ownership is free if you're buying a five thousand dollar home. It's five thousand if you buy a ten. It's it's ten thousand if you buy a fifteen thousand dollar home, and it's fifteen thousand if you buy a twenty. You basically get five thousand off your first home. So if you're ranking up, I always say just get the cheapest homes. Do not spend twenty grand on a home with all the storage available now. How they have it instead of what it used to be three years ago. It's just buy the five thousand dollar or five thousand gold homes. And that will save you a lot of money in the end. All right. Now you're only going to be able to put one storage box in there, but that's fine. You got storages from all the other places you can access from whatever storage box you have. It's not a issue. Now, if you know you're going to be making tons of gold because you're just, you know, you're built like that, then hey, you're probably not even watching this video if you're already built like that. So now right here you have the forge. You're going to be able to craft weapons. And you're going to be able to use the weaponsmithing, armoring, and engineering here. Armoring is going to be the clothing. Engineering is going to be certain weapons. Weaponsmithing will be certain weapons. So swords, uh, great sword, you know, things like that. Hammer is going to be weaponsmithing. Spears will be engineering. The rapiers, hatchets will be also engineering. This forge is going to allow you to make a lot of the heavier clothes items. Now the forge also contains weapons that if you have the certain materials, then you can craft these weapons instead of having to have your crafting up or have all these trophies to boost the you know level up. The stone cutting station right here, you're going to be able to get stone from the ores that you mine out in the field. Come back here, rank that up so you can go ahead and craft the gems. I believe it's all in the jewel crafting station now in the update, so not sure how much the stone crafting station is going to be used going forward. You have the smelter here where you take the iron ore, turn it into steel, then you get the star metal, and you can just rank it up from there. Very important in the game if you want to make better tools early on. Then you have the woodworking station where you can take green wood from the green trees, uh, the young trees that you find out there in the world, turn them into timber, and so on. Rank that up. The workshop here you're going to be able to use to make your furnishing level go higher and your engineering. You're going to be able to make bows, muskets, tools, uh, instruments, trophies, all sorts of good stuff here. Now, furnishing is the hardest thing to rank up in the game, and it's not even close. 
So if you're really wanting to grind and to get ahead of everybody early, furnishing, if you want to do that grind and try to be the first one selling trophies and whatnot, hey, more power to you. But just remember the major trophies, you're going to have to get special rare things to make those, and you can only do that by chest runs late in game. So when you're going to make one of these tools, you will see the different materials you need. You can see what selected perks that you can select that you find out in the store from the chest that you loot. So if you come across chests, feel free to loot them. You might get some of these that you use later on. Save all your craft mods because you never know what day when the AGS changes what they do or specialize in. You might need one. Azoth Salt will boost the rarity or could possibly boost the rarity or the perks that are on the weapon. Here are the trophies. You got trophies. You got the green trophies, the blue trophies, and the purple trophies. The green ones do 3% additional damage to whatever enemy type. The blue ones do 4%, and the purple ones do 5%. They're the same thing that you can get trophies for logging luck or mining luck, harvesting luck, scanning luck, all that good stuff. There's also trophies that are just luck based. So if you're looting chests out in the world, you might get more lucky. I don't know how much I believe in luck in this game. I don't know. I've had all the majors all the time, and I still don't get that much rare stuff from chess. So who knows? I would say don't waste your money on it. All right. So we see we have our main story quest out there to the right. We have other small quests, and that's where we're going to head to next.